Hello and welcome to the Cambridge Assessment Podcast. I'm Alana Walden and today we're joined by Tim Oates, Cambridge Assessment's Director of Assessment Research and Development and Jill Duffy, Chief Executive of our UK Exam Board, OCR, as they discuss recently confirmed plans to develop a new GCSE in natural history. Hi Tim, there's been an awful lot of media interest in uh, GCSE natural history. Do you want to just sort of explain where this idea has come from? Well, yeah, I will. And we're really pleased, by the way, that the the media and the public have, and, and important organisations and people have, have picked up this discussion about a GCSE in natural history. It, it really started with Mary Cole, who's a journalist and naturalist. Um, she's quite famous for a, a book she wrote, um, Curlew Moon, about the decline of the curlew in England. Her, her interests are much wider than that. And she was very concerned about the detachment of young people from the natural world, the increasing detachment. Uh, and that's been shown in, for example, the work of, of Robert McFarlane, who's shown that young people are dropping the, the names of common species from the way in which they talk about the world. And the even dictionaries are beginning to drop species that you and I would be entirely familiar with. Um, so is it just a bunch of oldies concerned that the youngsters are no longer remembering things? Um, to some extent, yes. Um, my own my own background is I, I was very connected to nature and, and drew constantly on my experience of being out there. And the evidence is, the research is showing that young people are quite disconnected from the natural world and yet are concerned about the climate, about the environment and what we're doing as a species on the planet. So so Mary became concerned about it, thought about what should be done to correct um, our, our, our kind of, the kind of direction of travel in terms of young people's engagement with the natural world and thought that a formal qualification would be useful, one part of the complex jigsaw of responding to this. Um, she put together a petition. Um, there were thousands of signatories to this and a lot of interest by responsible bodies and associations. And um, a couple of years ago, the um, politician Caroline Lucas from the Green Party became interested mm. and, and widened the, the sort of activities around the GCSE. Mary and Caroline went to see the Secretary of State. Secretary of State said, well, you need to talk to an awarding body. Um, so they involved me in discussions and I put together some aims and a prototype assessment model uh, and the media stories took off from there. So all of that adds up, I think, to to the GCSE being a, a good idea. Um, Jill, jo, can, you, can you look at, at why we need one, do you think? Well, I think we think there's a gap in the curriculum at the moment that isn't encouraging a connection with, with the natural world. Um, at the same time, we know that young people are very much engaged on the debate on the environment and they understand what their role should be and could be in protecting for the future. But research that was done by Oxfam showed that only 4% of students feel that they know a lot about climate change and 70% of students want to learn more about the environment. So we know that they want to get engaged, but we also know that they feel at the moment that they don't have enough knowledge or understanding to help them engage effectively. And, and I think it, it, the, the thing with GCSEs is they feel terribly formal. It's an examination. But I guess what we know is that one of the things that is important in education is, is the role of assessment. It, it has a strong washback into uh, learning programmes. Uh, it enables recognition of learning it gives structure and focus. It enables us to be very clear about what it is that we see as the desirable outcomes. Um, it will be important to get it right, though, won't it? Because that washback mm. occasionally can be averse. It needs to be done very carefully to make sure it's positive, that we, we, if, if we're concerned about young children's engagement with the natural world, that the GCA, GCSE has to genuinely contribute to that, not actually threaten it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we know that there are... We're already covering some environmental topics uh, in subjects such as GCSE geography or um, GCSE biology. But we think that this natural history could complement that and really bridge the gap between these subjects so that we get a sort of a richer, if you like, understanding um, of, of the environment for, for young people. So that raises the whole question of why the title natural history and not something else, what, what the content should be, 
uh, and what the assessment should look like. And we've already done some, I think, some very good and detailed thinking about that. Um, what was your reaction to, to the term natural history when you were first exposed to it? Well, I think when I was first exposed to it, as you know, I thought, is this the right title? Um, because it it seems it seemed a bit sort of old fashioned. Um, but I think when you look at it, um, it does sort of encompass much more about, if you like, the holistic thing that we're talking about here, about the relationship between nature, the environment um, and society, if you like. So I think I think it works, absolutely works as a title um, and links to things like the Natural History Museum. Um, so I think it's I think it's a good title. A lot. It's, it's amusing in many ways. But when when Mary, Karen, and I have, have taken uh, the idea out and um, to teachers, to young people, to parents, um, people often have said, "Oh, natural history sounds terribly traditional, doesn't it?" And 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 the moment we explain what the content, the proposed content and scope of the qualification and the learning program is, I mean, engaging with. Uh, how the natural world has been represented in art and literature, uh, engaging with whole organisms in context, getting out there, doing observational work, writing up those observations, collect, gathering data, presenting it, interpreting it, that they immediately come to the conclusion that actual naturalism is the right title. Um, and it, it refers back, indeed, to a, to a long tradition established in Britain, uh, of, of classifying, understanding, observing and reflecting on the natural world. So, so it looks forward, I think, to um, better consciousness and management of our relationship with the natural world uh, and back at all, all of the, the insights that we gain through the history of engagement with nature. So I'm, I'm pretty convinced uh, it, 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 it has the right resonance and, and the right content. So, Jill, as uh, Chief Executive of OCR, what do you see as the uh, challenges in developing the qualification? I think, first of all, we need to look at um, you know, how this will be managed in schools. Um, so, for example, who's going to teach it and how are we going to support them? Because we haven't got um, a host of teachers who are natural history teachers. Um, but we, ha- we know we've got a lot of teachers who would be very interested in teaching this subject. So what sort of professional development do we need to develop um, that will make them feel confident uh, in teaching this and how can we ensure that we've got good support um, to enable them to teach this uh, in the classroom. So I think working with teachers, working with other stakeholders is incredibly important. We're already um, consulting widely on this so we're talking to a range of stakeholders including young people themselves. Um, We're talking to representatives of teachers such as ASCL engaging with the Royal Societies um, uh, as well as other other bodies and, you know, working to talk to uh, to as many people as possible. So if anyone is interested in engaging with us on this, then please, please get on, uh, get in touch uh, with us. And I think, um, you know, one thing it'd be good to get your view on, 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 Tim, is obviously we need to know where this will be in the sort of accountability measures. Um, so I don't know if you've got any early thoughts on that. Right, well, it's it's abs- that's absolutely critical. Um, it's a new subject. How does it fit? How, how would it fit in relationship to existing subjects? How would it fit within, as you say, the accountability measures and targets like the English baccalaureate specification? Done a lot of thinking about this, um, and um, w- w- we see it in in the following way. There's some unique aspects to this potential qualification. We, we know that biologists in, in university um, and biology departments are concerned that, that engagement with whole organisms in context has, has kind of, uh, with, without quite realising it, been, been um, moved out of the higher education curriculum. Biology has tended to focus on 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 theoretical aspects of the subject um, and, and on sub-disciplines within biology, biochemistry and so on. So, so this focus on whole organisms in context 
getting out there and observing them, understanding their behaviour, understanding the, the challenges uh, which they face, that, that's welcomed by people in higher education. So, so it fits quite nicely in terms of some real curriculum needs, we think. Um, how does it fit with other qualifications? We, we've done some prototype content. Um, you know, would, would, would it just simply overlap uh, in, in an unmanageable way with uh, geography and biology? No. Um, in looking at the way in which the natural world has been represented in art and literature, in, in, in looking at local contexts, understanding how to observe log data and so on, we, we don't find any more biology and geography from the existing qualifications in natural history than there is, say, mathematics and physics or geography and history. So that's good. I mean, we, in curriculum terms, I think we can locate it really well. It would be an, uh, have a unique character. Um, it would, would uh, add to the qualifications catalogue in an appropriate way, not, not uh, overlap unduly with existing well-established qualifications and subjects. In terms of accountability measures and targets, the English baccalaureate is clearly, clearly a crucial one for the, the nation. Um, we, we, we are currently proposing that natural history does not sit as a science within the core requirement of the English baccalaureate. It, it, we, we, in working with schools, we know that schools can meet the English um, baccalaureate requirement, and, and still children can take uh, three to four additional GCSEs to, to enrich the programme that they take, and for, for those programmes to be balanced, broad and balanced. And so we, we think it will sit within these three to four option slots alongside the formal English baccalaureate requirement, um, giving a nice pathway, an enrichment, an engaging element to the total set of qualifications which children take in Key Stage 4. So, Joel, we've talked about the challenges of development, and, and yeah, let's not underestimate <laughs> the detailed work and uh, the, 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 the sheer uh, grind of the detail of getting something like this really sorted. Um, and, and I suppose uh, the media stories are, have been incredibly positive, but, but we've got agreement to quite a high level of generality at the moment. Um, we've now got to get through the process of reaching a secure agreement about the specifics of the qualification to make sure that it, it covers what will indeed motivate, engage young people and prepare them for the future. It is, will lead to uh, teachable, uh, manageable and rich programmes within schools. Um, and so we will have to work through a great deal of the detail. And, and some of those detailed points are, are controversial and getting the balance across the themes that we've already discussed right. That is going to be challenging. But consultation, I'm, I'm sure, and dialogue with um, key individuals, with key constituencies, students, teachers, parents, um, is, is going to be fundamental to that. And so I, I, I can see why you've emphasised it, that consultation process, and, and the need for people to get in contact with us to, to make sure that we're encompassing their considerations, that, that their concerns as well. Um, that, that, that's so, so important. Um, do, you, do you want to, to just sort of round up with, with, with seeing, seeing the future of this qualification? Yeah, I mean, I think the next steps are, as I say, we are doing a consultation, a very wide consultation on this, um, and then we will be working uh, with the DfE um, in terms of the content of this qualification. Um, I think, for me, you know, what do I think the future of this qualification is? Well, for me, it's very much about encouraging um, a connection uh, with the natural world for our young people, because without that connection... I think it, it becomes difficult for young people to engage in the debate on the environment um, and understand what they could do to really protect uh, the environment for the future. Um, and I just want to finish really what, with what Caroline Lucas has said recently. You know, we won't protect what we don't love and we won't love what we don't know. Thank you very much, Jill.
Thank you for listening to the Cambridge Assessment podcast. You can find all of our podcasts on the Cambridge Assessment website. Just search Podcast Gallery. Or you can find us on YouTube or wherever you usually listen to your podcasts.